What's going on, guys? Chase, ChaseWins.com, coming to you for Monday, the 25th of November. Sorry, it's kind of late. Didn't have time to do a video earlier today. Had a meeting with my attorney. Um, you know, most people think, oh, a meeting with an attorney is, is supposed to be a bad thing, but sometimes you just get a really, really good laugh out of it. And um, it was a good meeting. It really was. So that's all I'm going to say about it for now. It was a really, really good meeting. Um, so anyway, here now to at least get you a free play. Uh, did not do a recap yesterday for Saturday, so I need to do one for Saturday and Sunday. Saturday night went to the Bulls-Hornets game set courtside. I know a bunch of you were texting me saying you saw me on TV. Um, and then you know people that follow me on Twitter got some pictures and stuff. Um, it was a good time, and then yesterday, you know, a lot of times I won't do a free play on Sunday, uh, just kind of get in, get the plays completed and out, and then it's family day for, for the rest of the day. So on Saturday, profitable day. Um, sorry about that. Um, college football, profitable. NHL, profitable. College basketball, as always, profitable. The only thing that we did lose money in was the NBA. Um, so we'll start with that. The NBA, we lost on the Bulls, minus one and a half. Again, I was at that game. Bulls had a tremendous lead uh, multiple times in that game. First half was all dominated by the Bulls. Second half, they not only let the Hornets come back, make a game of it, but they let the Hornets take the lead and then take a pretty substantial double-digit lead. Um and then um, after that, basically single-handedly by Kobe White and Zach Levine, they came back, they made a game of it, four fouls in the last 32 seconds. That just shows that, that that's exactly why they set it up that way. Um, and then with a the last-second turnover, 0.8 seconds left, Levine goes up for the three-pointer to win the game by one. They should have won that game by double digits. So, uh, you know, I'm not even going to complain about it. I was there. It was a thrilling way to end it. I enjoyed it. But at the same time, it should have never get, it should have never been that close. So that's that's on the side of the Bulls. They really played. Poor, poor defense in that second half. The offense was taking terrible shots. They weren't rebounding worth the shit. And the Hornets had all the momentum. Um, they really did. So that and then the uh, Trailblazers just got outright whooped from start to finish by the Cavaliers. So that was what we dropped there. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, have one play in the NHL, which was the Arizona Coyotes. Money line minus 120. Nice, easy win from start to finish there. Um College football, Minnesota was a nice winner. Michigan State was a nice winner. Uh, top play, Alabama over 61 and a half. It was a winner at the start of the fourth quarter. Still had almost an entire quarter of football left. Nice top play winner. Uh, the plays that we did drop, we had Ohio State. And I would make that play over and over again because, it, listen, I know a lot of people are like now talking about how Ohio State doesn't have it. They let Penn State do this. Penn State didn't do anything. Ohio State almost killed themselves. Ohio State was up 14 to nothing going into the half. Should have been 28 to nothing. They made a couple of mistakes that which prevented them from furthering that lead and almost making it out of reach before halftime. But they go in there, they're up by two touchdowns. They only needed to win by 18, I believe it was. And then they just made a lot of mistakes in that second half, which hats off to Penn State, they capitalized on. So it made a game of it. So we did drop that, and then FAU just barely, barely did not cover their late. But with the top play winner, nevertheless, it was a winning day profitable day in college football yet again we are still on track to have the best season of college football ever rivalry bleh, rivalry week is this saturday so a ton of really really good matchups there's going to be a lot of sharp lines guys so you pay, better pay attention don't just assume that what you have seen for the last few weeks is what you are going to see on the field bad teams are going to play good and play tough and good teams may end up looking ahead depending on what they have down the road as far as a conference championship or a um, potential playoff spot. You never know when you can catch a team off guard and uh, pick up a backdoor cover somewhere. So be, be careful with that. Now, 
We are going to have something really big and special going on for the Thanksgiving holiday. I'm not going to announce it yet. We'll get a little bit closer to it, and then I'll announce it. I'm sure all you guys will want to get involved. Um, just as a little Thanksgiving thank you to you guys. Um, but anyway, on that same day, college basketball, which is, I keep telling you guys, Everybody knows what I do in the MLB. A close second is always college basketball. It's profitable day in and day out. Every once in a while, we'll lose some money. But whenever we do, we go on streaks yet again. And some days aren't the prettiest. Just like the last two days. They haven't been the prettiest of days, but they've made money nonetheless. So on Saturday, three plays, Virginia Commonwealth, Illinois, and St. Mary's. St. Mary's did not cover, but Illinois and VCU both covered pretty handily for profit in college basketball yet again. So that makes profit on Saturday in college basketball, in college football, and in the NHL. We dropped the NBA, but a winning day nonetheless. Now we get into Sunday. Sunday certainly wasn't the prettiest of days, but we turned profit yet again. NFL, we started out one and one. We had the Atlanta Falcons and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over that cash late. Um, should have gone well over the total. Either way, we'll take it. Then we had over in the New York Jets in the Oakland Raiders game. There were a couple of really questionable calls there with some roughing the passer situations that I did not agree with. But either way, the offense never, ever even got started for Oakland. Everybody has doubted me when backing the Jets this year and what I have said about Sam Darnold and the Jets and their coaching staff as a whole. And now people are starting to be like, oh, yeah, the Jets. Well, where have you been for the last six weeks that we've been preaching this? Um, last two weeks in a row, we backed the Jets, and they've, they've been outright dominant winners. Um, we had the over. The Jets did more than what they that they needed to do. What I think more than anybody expected them to do offensively. And what's not a great Oakland defense, but it's a sustainable defense nonetheless. Oakland generated no offense, so you know we couldn't rely on New York to do it all by themselves. So we did drop that. Then we get into the later games. We had the Patriots. We laid the four and a half. Uh, they won by four, so we lost it to the hook. Um, and then we had the Jacksonville Jaguars. We took a shot on the underdog. I do not think Nick Folds needs to be out there yet. I don't think that he is where he needs to be to be back on the field. I, I don't care about this Minshew mania bullshit. I believe in Nick Foles wholeheartedly. I just don't think that he, health-wise, should be back out there yet. I really think that he needs to be looked at as next year's QB. But nevertheless, they went out there and got absolutely scorched by Tennessee. I still don't buy into the Tennessee hype. I think that their resume, per se, is still a little bit manufactured. Um, but yesterday, they stuck it to Jacksonville. So that would have put us down money. And then we get into – we did not have NHL yesterday. Then we get into our NBA game. We had the Houston Rockets. Houston Rockets – I've said they were overrated. Everybody knows my distaste for James Harden and my distaste for his true lack of actual talent versus, you know, what people just give him. Um, and this, this Houston Rockets team that was supposed to be like the next dynasty, guys, they can't win. I mean, look at them. The wins that they do have are not impressive. I got to hand it to Dallas. I really thought they were catching Dallas in a good spot. Do I think that they are truthfully a five-point better team at this point in time than Dallas? I do not. But I really thought that situationally they, they were catching Dallas in a good spot to be able to pick up a win and bag it by a margin greater than five. We'll say that. We'll word it that way. But they didn't. They got outright – they got their asses kicked from tip off to the final buzzer by Dallas. So hats off to him. And then we did drop one college football play or college basketball play. And that was on UC Irvine. They really, it was their fault too. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to sit there and say Detroit did anything spectacular. Otherwise, other than they were ready and capitalized on the slow pace and just the bad mistakes that UC Irvine was making early. So now you would go into it. And of course I got the emails from the degenerates being like, Oh my God, you do that. You suck. This is this. And I said, guys, there's a lot more to play now. Yes. We split out the early games. We come into the afternoon games and yeah, we just lost four games. You, you think there's no way we're going to come back and do anything now, but let's just see what happens. We have Kentucky figured it was the perfect spot to take Kentucky. It was close. 
but it was a winner. Minus 24 and a half, so a nice win there. It wasn't, like I said, it wasn't a pretty win, but it was a win nonetheless. Uh, then we had Hawaii in the late game, minus seven and a half. They won by eight, another winner. So now here we are. We're bringing it back. We're making some momentum. So what do we do from here? And now here's where we get into the interesting part. We're actually able to take what was a bad day and turn it into a winning day. So you would still be down technically two units there. Well, then we pick it up with Iowa minus 23, a nice winner. Still down a unit, a game, plus some juice. But then we have our top play on Liberty minus 10. Top play, easy winner. And uh, that right there takes us from what was going to be a bad day to certainly not a pretty day but a profitable day nonetheless, and that's all it's about. You just have to follow the system. I can sit there and preach this system till I'm blue in the face, but it's proven time and time again why you should do it. Because even on a day like yesterday, when you feel like there's no hope, you still walk away in the green. And college basketball, I can't say enough about it. If you're not on the college basketball season, you're missing out. I'm not going to sit here and get up here and preach it anymore. I never have to preach my MLB because it speaks for itself. How much more winning can we possibly do before you guys realize you're not going to find someone better in college basketball? You're just not. So jump on it. Uh, if you missed out on the combo pass, I do have a little discount going on the actual college basketball season that you can jump on. It's well worth it. You'll make your money back in the first week, guaranteed. Um, if not sooner, depending on what you, what you invest per game, what your bankroll allows. So... Make sure you jump on that. Uh, Three-day pass is $50. That gets you three days, all premium and daily top plays. $99 gets you seven days of the exact same thing. And um, the we ran a $250 special for a month pass. Congratulations to everybody that jumped on that. They're loving it already. Um, but what I'm going to do is because I'm not going to, you know, that discount's over. But what I decided to do is instead of bringing it back up to that $399, I bumped it up to $299, and I figured I'd leave it there for about 24 hours. So you still have a chance to jump on for an entire month for $300, which is a fantastic deal. Um, it basically, I mean, it comes out to about $10 a day. You know, 10 bucks a day, guys, to get all premium and all daily top plays in all sports. Plays of the week, month, and year obviously are not included. All right, so I think there's your recap. The two days that we missed, both profitable days, weren't the prettiest of days, but I'm not looking for style points here. I'm looking for money. Um, let's get into an NBA play. So I've got some NBA, NBA plays that I've got circled, but the first one that I actually locked in and made a wager on was the game involving the Grizzlies and the Pacers. Now, here's what I like about this game. So I bet the under, under 218 points. And here's why. You can go back and you can look at trends and you can look at, you know, the Pacers going under how many times or how many times these two teams meet up and have gone under. Really what I'm looking at is what they've done so far this year. The Pacers are one of the slowest paced teams in the NBA, and that's the way their system is designed. It's not that they're doing anything wrong. That's the way they're designed to play. Memphis, it plays a lot faster ball. But if you notice what Memphis does – they end up going through a lot of whatever a team does, whatever their opposing team is doing, Memphis starts to mimic in the second half. They figure it out in the first half, and they start to mimic it in the second half. So you, you have a team that plays up-tempo faster than Memphis. By second half, they're trying to play that speed. They've got a team that plays down-tempo, somebody like the Pacers. They are playing down-tempo in the second half which means what? Neither one of these teams are great scoring teams. They're in the bottom tier of overall scoring in the NBA. But you have the Pacers who burn a ton of clock, play you know, decent defense. Whether they're successful or not, they at least make the valiant effort to do so. Well, with Memphis, who would be the team that could push us over the total, by the second half, you'll see them dumbing down that, that speed and trying to play the same game that Indiana does. That is a flaw in the Grizzlies system. Sometimes it works, sometimes it bites them in the ass. I don't care who wins the game. It would not surprise me whatsoever if this game didn't hit 200 points. It should because they're not that terrible. They're not great outside shooting teams. Their, their free throws are average at best. And Indiana is just a slow team. If Memphis does what they always do, 218 is just too much. I think the average point, you know, where I see it would be 206, 207. So 
that was the first game that I locked in and that I'm going to take under 218. Indiana, Memphis, take it. Jump on a package. If you have any questions, send me an email. Plays will be coming out in a little while, and then I will fire off emails after that before I finish up for the day. Love you guys. I will see you back for Tuesday. We'll have a live show going on, everything else, for a normal Tuesday. See you guys, and uh, appreciate everything. Indiana, Memphis, NBA, under 218 points. See you.